Ronnie Dale, fourwheelingaustralia.com and welcome to another Wednesday video. This video is all about the lead up to the Drift the Fans event, the event that we attended on the East Coast. We had a lot of fans and followers catch up with us and patrons from Patreon. Now we all know, or most of you guys are probably aware, that my channel is very well independent thanks to all my patrons on Patreon, which makes all this stuff possible. That said, however, I do reach out to companies and brands and people to assist in getting us flights to get over the east coast and film some things or in this case free trucks trucked over so this video is kind of like a thank you but at the same time i want it to be entertaining for you guys so it's a bit of a walk around of the drifter factory in the lead up to the events and i'll set the boys up with a few pranks so i hope you guys enjoy and uh oh and also luke actually has a really interesting story about how he became Luke the Drifter. That's at the end of this video. So check it out. Cheers, guys. Hey, Ronnie Dale, fourwheelinginaustralia.com. Used to be Western Australia, we've got to change the name. So stay tuned for that. You're watching a Wednesday video. We are at the Drifter HQ in Gloucester, New South Wales. Uh, I, the other day, well, over three days, four days, I drove 4,000 kilometers to get here. Wayne and Torben, they got the red carpet treatment and flew in and had their cars trucked over. Lucky them, eh? I'm all refreshed now, but we're at the HQ, so this video is all about the Drifter factory. We're gonna have a look around here. And this is a lead up to the events, but I've also got a few setups that I've done to the boys and a few surprises for them. So this is what happened yesterday. <laughs> What's the Wednesday video about? Welcome to Wednesday. Wednesday, hump day. Hump day. This time, it's not me that's delusional. I was delusional for four days. <laughs> it's these boys now. I'm good. Wayne, <laughs> Captain Grady, <laughs> Nathan, Peter Canvas, <laughs> and Torben. He's had a shave. I drove 4,000 k's to get here. The boys went on a plane today. We're still waiting for Harry and Amalia. They are in transit, they'll be here soon. So, uh, let's get the first surprise out of the way. You ready, Torps? Yeah. The first surprise, first surprise for you. Are you ready? Always ready. You ready, boys? Yeah. We're getting a bit worried now. Ready for fitment? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, fitment. Fitment? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> who'd go. like to come up first? So, canvas jocks. Does canvas jocks? <laughs> oh, now, oh, I'm see. sorry if the dart size has sort of underestimated, <coughs> we're sorry. If we've, if we've overestimated, I'm sorry for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's if that awesome. don't work, it can actually wear a bikini. <laughs> That's awesome. Could be an eye patch. Sweet. Oh, an eye patch. Dust mask. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really don't like your chances of getting in them, but anyway. <laughs> That's That's awesome. Awesome. Yes, like I said, if we've overestimated the size of the dart, I'm, I'm, I'm still sorry for you guys. But if we've underestimated, well, I'm sorry. That's awesome. Alright, try one. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> I can see how I can, I'm not going to get into them. My legs are not that skinny. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. All right. All right. I've, got, I've got another one for you, too. <laughs> 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 that way. So, by the way, this is the canvas room where all the canvas bags are made. That's cool. How, many, how many bags you got on? Oh, about 240 odd or something like 240 that. 240 odd. Yep. And Brett Hooker has how many? 239. Oh, so he hasn't got the latest one? No, maybe not. Has he, no, he hasn't got, got the jocks. He hasn't got these, has he? He hasn't got the jocks, right. yeah. There you go, Ben Hooker. <laughs> <laughs> he might prefer these. Yeah. <laughs> these are mine. <laughs> Don't wear them up at Cobar, it could be a bit chilly. <laughs> I'll give him a go. I was, actually, I was actually instructed after I showed somebody that I should have put the studs down the crack. I can do it now if you like. Nathan, he's a canvas man as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 
That's awesome. PM canvas. I had to put a bit of bling cabinet on. Oh yeah, I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I was going right. to go for a tassel, but I had nothing to make a tassel out of. Did <laughs> you make another one? <laughs> for you. <laughs> oh, it's still rolling. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, uh, yeah, I've actually got another surprise for you. Yeah. Let's, let's Match go. it big any time. Yeah. <laughs> let's go find <laughs> out what that is. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Okay, no worries. See you. Yeah, yeah, awesome. <laughs> Sweet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got something to hang on. I'm wearing those tonight. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be warm tonight. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh yeah, that's good actually. Yeah, because yeah. you know he's not allowed to oh, use access. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
260 on that side, he's got two more on the other. Two more? Two more. No, it's only one on the other is side. Is it? Oh, yeah. it, it must have a divider on it. Yeah, because they're like AGMs. Two. So 200 two. AGMs is literally as big as so that box. So that's 520 that we can see. This will be about, this will be 60 something kilos. Yeah, and the rest. Probably 80. And then the other one. Probably 80 kilos. So you have about 130, 140 kilos of bad battery. In fact, I actually, I know a guy with one of those and it's 80 kilos. This is the only size truck that will suit a lot like this. This will look stupid on any other car. I agree. It looks really awesome on this one. Yeah. Unusually, it doesn't have a bull bar, but... The whole thing is... But it works well. Mm. It's a very neat winch And he's got the sensors built into the... Um, oh, yeah. That's far too good. Recovery points are pretty ram-sized. <laughs> 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 About 12 ton rated or something yeah. stupid. Yeah, like, there's two of them. They are monstrous. <laughs> oh, you didn't want to see it? Yeah, yeah like, when you it, it, has it, has it has a stopper in the back. It does have a stopper. Oh, yeah, you can't see it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you can, un you can basically just unhook it. Actually, there's a latch in there. Yeah, there's actually a, like, a, like a gate latch. You got it? Oh, back, yeah. So that's how you got it. Boom. Oh. Seriously, Torbs, feel the way that's drawn. Oh shit. You actually feel like that is my new system. Like, mm. well that's what I wanted to do, but I'm not I'm not some you know, I'm not exactly a gym junkie. <laughs> <laughs> so this I really like. But I'll go with a thinner table. Yeah, that's fair. It, it, they are hollow, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I mean I do understand because you've got legs on it, right? So you could actually pull it's it out. It's not heavy though. Legs. I mean, again, I, uh, it, it all looks quite heavy duty, but it's, like well, it, it's heavy duty. Isn't yeah. it? it feels quite yeah. strong, but it doesn't. It's not actually that heavy. Yeah, before a table, it's pretty heavy. Uh, I, I guess in comparison, like, yeah, in comparison to all the drawers and that, yeah, that's the only thing that I'll, I'll pick on this. Probably because it's got galvanized steel legs. Yeah, but you know what I'll do. You know those Uniflame tables. No, yeah. um, are they Uniflame or Snowpeak tables? Snowpeaks. No, the Snowpeaks. Oh, the IJTs. Yeah, the IJTs. The yeah. one that clip onto the fire pit and that. Yeah. Those, I reckon one of those in here. Right? Yeah, okay. And then just put like two little slots for the legs and put underneath. Yeah. That's just smart going to So, Luke, if you're uh, watching this, chill out. Think about that one. Remember that family trip I did with the Dot 6? Well, this is where that trailer came from. This factory right here. And also the Dot 4, which I'm towing across the Simpson in an upcoming series, is from this factory as well. Now, as far as I know, and it will probably be corrected if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that the whole Drifter brand is based around, well, the core of the business are these trailers. And it's just good to see another successful Aussie business do well, who is actually supporting Australian jobs using Australian material. That's pretty cool. Just don't ask these boys how it's towed. Yeah, I can imagine. I can't see from all the dust. It's a good answer. Yeah, just stay away from the roof. Yeah, yeah. Dead one. Like the last one. No, it's coming together, so it should be fine. Cool. And have you seen Toffee's trailer? Yeah, I'll look at that. So we finally tracked down Luke, and that was the first time that Wayne and Torben actually have met him in person. He's very hard to track down because he's just super busy, as you probably imagine. Now, the next bit coming up is the interview with Luke the Drifter of how he actually became and known as Luke the Drifter. It's an unexpected story, really. All right, so I'm now actually at the event, which you'll see in another video, but uh, I've got Luke here. How you going, Luke? Good, thanks. Yeah, good. So we're, you, we're having a chat about um, the story about uh, in Washington State. Yeah. With um, how you were you were dragging pack mules and yeah, yeah, that's how it all sort of started. And I was probably 23 years old and went to America and uh, bought a motorbike in Los Angeles and <laughs> head up the West Coast. And I had a, a mate there in Washington State. And I've been working on some stations in North uh, North Queensland for a while, so I'm sort of into horses. And uh, I got a job as a mule packer uh, up there in, in in Washington State. And there's this Cascade Mountain Range, which is um, huge area of uh, wilderness um, in the northwest there, just sort of east of Seattle. And it's a massive wilderness area and uh, you know a lot of hunters go in there and uh, hunters and tourists and you know it's just a beautiful area so it's only accessible by mule, mule packing or uh, walking so um, 
mule packing is a big thing in that area, so I got a job. And it's an interesting job. <laughs> yeah, it was, I mean, I never, I'd ridden horses light and mustering, but I never, you know, mule packing is a real art because uh, the mules are sort of, you know, a, a bit of a difficult animal sometimes, and they're quite cantankerous, they call them. And um, you know, packing is a real art because you've got to literally take all sorts of gear, like everything you'd normally take camping, from rifles and cartons of beer and your sleeping bags and everything has got to be packed, you know. So how and many pack mules are we talking? Oh, some of the good packers would take up to 15 mules in a, in a, in a string. And um, <laughs> but it depends on how good he was and how good the, the animals were. So mm. when I started out, I just had two mules, for example, and they'd give me two good mules. And then I was, as I got better as a, as a packer, they'd give me more and more mules. And towards the end, I had nine. Nine was my biggest string. Nine mules. Yeah, it's like, um, you know, so yeah, you pack all, you got a big canvas money, they call it. So it's a big sheet of tarp you lay out in the ground and you've got all the gear in a big pile and you go over to get um, sort of two bags or two bits of gear and you weigh it in your hands and then you lay it out on two tarps because it's all got to be balanced mm. and the balancing is a big part of it. So you take pack mules with all the gear and then your, the tourists or the hunters they'll be on horseback? That's right, it. yeah. So what and you'll be on horseback to yeah, drag the mules? Yeah, so that, say if it's a group of hunters they'd turn up you know first light and um, we generally have a guide and then they would take off straight away. Mm. And um, because you know the, the hunters or the tourists are, you know, they need to um, rest quite often, you know, because they get saddle sore and that sort of thing. Because it's a long ride; it could be 10, 15 miles in a day. It's a long ride. Yeah. So they head off straight away, and then we muck around, get all their gear packed, and we might an hour or two later head off. But we walk with the horses and mules really fast, so we so overtake catch up them to by them. yeah, yeah, real oh, wow. quick. Probably, normally about lunchtime, and then we t and we don't stop. Like you don't stop. You eat your sandwich on 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 the horse and. Um, mm. And you get to camp, and then we'd set the camp up. So by the time the, the tourists came in, you know about Didn't four o'clock, it's all set yeah, up. Right. You know, which is pretty good. Sounds pretty awesome. So it's amazing, you know, interesting time, and uh, mm. you know, um, yeah. on, on one of those photos, which is actually your logo now, mm -hmm. that was your first kitchen. Yeah. So that's, anyway, so what we would do is you've got the canvas manis, they'd call them, um, but also we had these uh, boxes on the mules, and uh, there's a box you know, about two foot wide. Uh, three foot high and just a really good solid ply box and we'd um, put some kitchen gear in some of them and there'd be a little lid that flips over and some drawers mm. and there's a pair of them that work together of course and uh, there was about two or three lots of boxes some were also eskies with you know, <coughs> insulated like an esky okay anyway I'd, I'd been um, around Australia with my two brothers in a falcon panel van in January the year before and went all through the desert tracks. So we did Tanami and Unadada and a all this thing, an old panel van, yeah. <laughs> and um, there was three of us in the front of the truck, but it was so hot, you know, we couldn't all fit in the front. So one of us had to sit on the roof. <laughs> and half around Australia, and every hour, we'd the guy on the roof would go to the driver's seat, and the guy on the driver's seat come to the passenger seat. We'd just keep rotating in the window and out the window. And pretty cool trip, young fellas, you know. <laughs> an old panel van, and in January, mate, it was so hot. Anyway, we didn't have any kitchen gear or camping equipment. We just had swags, and mm. we were cooking all our all our food on the ground. You know, just a little stove on the ground and a fire. And I was always thinking, like, we need a little camping kitchen. That's just in my head all the time. And um, you know, I was sort of thinking about stuff like that. And anyway, I went to America and I saw these. Well, it was mule packing. I saw these boxes on the back of the mules. Mm. And I was while I was riding, because you're riding all day, day after day, riding. I was just I basically worked out of my head a design how I could turn this box into a kitchen so the lid folds out a little bit like what they did and I improved the design to have the, the front folds out this way and designed the first trip to kitchen and um, so that's where it all came all about came from yeah so mm. when I came home from America I straight away went to my dad's shed and I built this thing it took me three days cut a few sheets of ply up and that was the first trip to kitchen and then I, when I went traveling not long after that again up the Tanami and this time I you know just in the back of my old Land Cruiser had a 47 series and um, stop on the side of the road, pull the kitchen out, fold it out, and you've got a little camping kitchen. It was just brilliant. So, and then it's just evolved from there. Yeah, I had about five years and used it, and I didn't. I, I, you know, I was working with horses, and I wasn't a businessman at all by any means. And mm. um, several people sort of saw it when I was travelling and camping. They'd go, "Wow, that's amazing! You should sell those." And I'm like, "Oh, I don't know how would I sell that?" And they'd say, "Well, go to the camping shows." So someone told me I should go to the show, and so mm. I did go to a show and sold a couple. They went to another show and sold a few more and thought, oh, there's something here, you know. So we just kept going from there. So that's how it sort of worked out. And um, here's the logo here, actually. It's probably a good spot to see it. Yeah. And that's a uh, um, picture of me on a, on a horse, a horse called Buffalo. 
uh, coming out of the Ashinola River in, in the Cascades. And it looks like a camel a little bit, but that's actually a mule with a box on the back. So I just think it was a camel too. <laughs> yeah. And on this, this photo, there's nine mules behind here, but we just cut it out and uh, come our logo ever since. It's quite cool because inside the map of Australia fits nice. It's me on a horse with a mule and the original sort of camping box where I got the idea from. So that logo tells the whole story of where Drifter came from. So where did the name, name come from? Oh, when I, was, I used to travel a lot, I was in the army, went AWOL and uh, because of that I had to travel a lot. You know, I was working illegally for a fair while as well. Yeah. Cotton chipping and doing all sorts of jobs out bush. And, um, and I ended up in North Queensland and a guy there, Mick Trout, he, was a, um, he, had, he owned cattle stations. He gave me a job, gave me a start and uh, he got me into the horses and he named me Luke the Drifter as the nickname of... Um, so how, how old were you then? Oh, I was 22, 23. Wow, yeah. so stuck with you for a long time. Yeah, and so, uh, you know, he started calling me Luke the Drifter and I sort of, um, you know, I just used to start, um, I suppose, you know, I was become a, you know, I started working as a carpenter after a while. I got back from America and realised there's no money riding horses for a living, so mm. started learning to be a carpenter and I used to sort of uh, tag some of my tools, Drifter, you know, just like I'd etch them in there so no one would pinch your level and stuff like oh. that. Yeah. So um, the name sort of stuck a little bit and when I come to having a business, it was just the perfect name, mm. Drifter. And um, sort of, yeah, like I said, it was my nickname and um, it really suits what we do. Um, so it's, yeah, it's been it's probably really one good. of the coolest background stories to a business, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that was, you know, early days of just myself for a long time and um, mm. now we've of course got 70 staff and we do a lot of different things, but it's all just slowly evolved from, from yeah. day one. Yeah. All right, well, we better get moving. We're all packed. Um, Wayne's still packing up back there. That's why he's not here. And we're going to go to the event. You guys are going to get a shopping on the Yeah, we're going to do a shop, get some stuff ready for the yeah. cooking demos and our dinners and things. So Harry's doing cooking demos at the Drifter event. Um, and he's also cooking dinner and breakfast. And... No, nah, we're, we're going to help you. I'll sing for myself. We're going to help you. Yeah, he can cook for yourself, don't worry about us. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's about it I guess, so we are going to head off now and uh, we'll see you at the event, which will be in another video. So thank you very much for watching, see you then.